travelers and welcome to another video. I'm Tally of Tally'sTinyTreasures.com where I blog about my hiking, camping, and travel experiences. Today we're going to be diving into some of spring 2023's fashion trends and like I do with most of these fashion videos I will be picking out at the end some of my favorites that I think will be a must to have for your travel wardrobe, for vacations, hiking, being anything like that. It really always amazes me how different the fall and winter trends are to the spring and summer. This winter was, winter 2022, was really kind of muted and toned down and I felt like it was really wearable for just the average everyday person. I don't necessarily think that for this uh, round. So let's get into some of the trends. So there's, I saw a lot of Grecian, French, prep school, rosettes, heavy metals, skinny pants. Uh, yay, because <laughs> I am a millennial and I don't think I look good in baggy pants. Gauzy knits, mid-length skirts, and of course cargo pants are here once again, and then capes. And I'm a little mad that capes weren't a thing back in fall. I tend to think of them as fall kind of pieces as opposed to spring. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> so, and then there were definitely some really unwearable trends that I think unless you're just you're confident enough to rock this or you're an influencer or a celebrity, I definitely feel like there are more of those kind of trends that caters to those types of people as opposed to everyday people kind of streetwear stuff. Alrighty, so first let's get into what I think are the more wearable fashion trends for spring 2023. And And Grecian dresses were a thing in the 2010s. I still have one in my closet, actually. 12 seconds later. I think I bought this, I can't remember for sure. I think maybe my junior year. So that would have been uh, either 2011 or 2012 that I bought this and you know, it has the kind of the Grecian bottom, a much more modern style top. The cutouts like this were very in style. And so maybe I could wear it again. <laughs> the only thing I'm not crazy about is the color of that dress. I wore very much so bright colors when I was younger. And, and if I wasn't in colors, I was like in all black, it was strange. And now I feel like I wear a lot more muted earth tones. I just don't think I look as good in bright colors. But as I said, um, like the top and the bottom of the dress I feel like is very on trend. The top I feel like is a little bit too 2010s kind of thing. And the, so the Grecian dresses are a little bit different than they were back then. Not that if you kept one, like I kept mine, that you can't wear it. I feel like a lot of the Grecian dresses I saw were pretty influenced by that viral Kim K dress. I, I saw a lot of kind of that. They're a lot more sleeker and slimmer in style. Uh, kind of like almost a Grecian and then like a slip dress had a baby. Those are the kind of vibes that I'm getting from more of the Grecian styles. And of course, if you want to double up on trends, you can get something that is more in a transparent fabric if that is your thing. I definitely would want to wear like a slip dress underneath. You can also opt for cutouts and then we also have uh, tube tops. Tube tops are something that I did see a lot, you know, the, the, the bandeau style. And so it's straight claw or else like a tube top, but it's, it's not a shirt. It's a full dress. I saw more with the full dress and stuff than I did actually tops. But I feel like this is a pretty nice summer dress to have. If you really like the Grecian style, I always kind of liked it because it may, gave me, you know, goddess kind of vibes. And I think a lot of the Grecian sweats are very flatting on lots of different body types. 
you don't have to just be a tall, super skinny runway model to be able to pull it off. And then as a part of for travel, I do think it would be a great thing just to bring if you're traveling and you need something that you need, can dress up, you could keep this and then it, you could dress it down for the day and then you could dress it up for night if you're going out eating, maybe you're going to a club or something. I think it could be quite a versatile piece and also nice and cool and breezy for the summer. So you can get it now in the spring and I think you can wear it all through the spring and then into the summer. That's another thing I usually like to look for when I'm trying to pick out trends that I want to incorporate into my closet. I look at it and say, is this going to be just a trend that I'm only interested in because it's trending right now here in spring, but then when summer comes, I'm not gonna wear it and I'm definitely not gonna wear it in, you know, fall or winter. I like something that's a little bit more versatile and easily blends into my own personal style on my closet and wardrobe. Fringe. I swear fringe was a thing last summer. I can't remember for sure, but I think it was. It was either spring or summer. Fringe was a thing and fringe is back. If you hate fringe, you could do feathers. I did see some feather looks because fringe isn't for everybody. I like it more for like a bag. I like fringe more that's like as a part like this and it's a part of accessory as opposed to here's the whole outfit. It's all fringe, all feathers. Um, maybe if I went and to the club more, it would be a thing. I like how I said I went to the club more as if I go to the club at all. I don't go to the club at all. I just like, I mean like, I mean, look at this dress. It's beautiful, especially on the model. I don't know what I would wear this to. Like, I don't, I can't think of anything. I literally can't think of anything. Now, if you, there, there's definitely a lot more wearable stuff than this. Um, like there's this one and it's giving very much still kind of, uh, kind of giving the like the, the dystopian thing that was going around in the 2010s and that was heavily influenced by like the Hunger Games and Divergent and some other books and that they turned into movies that were going really viral and people who weren't even reading were reading them. This dress also has the tube top bandeau style as well and if you don't want a dress that is all over fringe, you can get sleeves. The only thing I don't really like about having like fringe and stuff on the sleeves is when you need to like eat or wash your hands or do anything. It's just in the way. Me. And you always could get a fringe jacket. This one by Sheen really reminded me of like the white Calgar boots that everybody was into last year. So if you still have those, you, you could get a matching jacket and have fringe and continue to be on trend. I also really like this one. The asymmetry of the skirt is something that also is in, and I really think that a lot of times an asymmetrical skirt is really actually figury, flat, figure flattering. Boy, was that, why was that so difficult to say? Hey, an asymmetrical skirt is really figure flattering. There we go. <laughs> so as much as I do like fringe for accessories, I do think that they can be a little bit impractical for everyday wear. Where, and if you're traveling a lot, I just, I can see snags and things happening and the fringe just slowly gets pulled out. And I imagine you need to be careful when you're zipping it into your suitcase because it's going to get, if the feathers or the fringe gets zipped into the zipper, the whole outfit could just be totally ruined. So usually if I have a piece like this where I'm like, I know it, the zipper cannot touch it, I try to put it like in the middle sandwich between other clothing items that if the zipper did get stuck in it, wouldn't be the end of the world, it wouldn't ruin it, just to protect it. But Usually I can only afford space-wise to have like one or two of those kind of items. Oh, 
All right, prep school. So prep school was a trend here in winter, uh, winter 2022 to 2023. If you're someone who's already into the academia style, you probably already have a lot of this stuff and you don't have to worry about going out and getting stuff to incorporate into your fashion wardrobe. Although I will say that the prep school was a little bit different than what I observed in the winter one runway. I honestly believe that like the winter prep school runway was just a little bit more wearable than what I'm seeing in the this kind of <laughs> runway. Honestly, it's giving kind of like weird core slash prep school. And I just, I don't know if it's completely wearable, but I feel like there's pieces of it that you could get, like you could get the jacket, you can get the fitted shirt and tie or the pants and you wear them separately <laughs> as opposed to all together like they did for the run, right? Although I'm sure that this is somebody's style and it's... It's just not mine because, especially this outfit, because I'm so short and petite, but I'm also curvy. I think this outfit would drown me and I'd just, I'd look like a fat little schoolboy, and it's just, I don't think it would be a good look. Rosettes. I feel like this was really, I feel like rosettes were a thing more in like the 80s and like early 90s maybe. And they are back. I mean, when I saw this trend, it was like deja vu. It was really bothering me. And I do think it's an 80s trend. I feel like rosettes, big roses, like, you know, they'd wear like on the shoulder, like right here, kind of like a brooch in a way. I'm pretty sure that was a thing in the 80s, maybe even the early 90s. Of course, you know, big rosettes aren't a thing for everyone. Although I do think they're really cool. Like this one that's just all in black. And then they had different kind of like more sparse uh, rosettes and this runway look and definitely playing more into the asymmetry that we've been seeing and using the rosettes to create that asymmetry. Rosettes aren't for everyone. <laughs> And so if you don't like rosettes, uh, you can go with bows. But honestly, when I was kind of looking around and trying to find stuff online to see, I was having a really hard time finding the rosettes from more affordable brands. I was the, the designer brands are kind of like the midway, the high-end designer brands and then kind of like the midway designer brands were had them. And they were a fair amount of money, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Like this one from the Saks Avenue. Uh, it has the pretty rosette and I think it's a lot more wearable where they've kind of placed it in the middle in the center. And if you're like me and you like to eat, it's going to, I think it would kind of help hide a food belly as opposed to accentuating it. Hopefully I'd have to see it on myself and wear it around. As I said, you can get, you know, the big bows, and I had a lot more better of time finding bows and more for old brands. I mean, if you want to spend a couple hundred dollars, Saks Fifth Avenue does have an option. And as you can see, bows are a thing. Giant bows were a thing. Oh man, what was it like? I think the late 2010s. More everyone was wearing like those big bows in their hair, kind of like Alice in Wonderland vibes. And I, I think this is like the only one that I kept. I had way bigger ones than this. They were, I had ones that were like two, three times the size of this. And I kept this one because it's just because I felt like it was a more wearable size. And when the trend fell, you know, to the wayside and people forgot about it, you end up with these big, huge, giant bows and you're just like... I mean, I look, it's not cool anymore if it's not a trend and then that's, it's like, I look a little bit like a dork just with like a big ass bow, like just sitting right here. And I also feel like I look really young for my age. 
And if I wear just like a huge big bow like right here, I think it makes me look even younger. And so me, but uh, Yes Style had, I actually did, once I finally found Yes Style, I didn't, I did find a few rosettes from them, but they had the bows and I definitely think that they were very cute. And as I said, here are the one with the roses and the asymmetry once again. And I feel like this is definitely a more wearable version of the trend. Heavy metals. I feel like this isn't really going to be a, a good trend for summer, just because a lot of the stuff I was looking at, I'm just like, that has to be hot. You know, if it's like 110 degrees out, I don't think I'd want to wear that. I don't want to go outside in general. But I do think this was a trend at some point because I thrifted this bag back oh, sometime when I was in high school. So somewhere between 2009 and 2013, I thrifted this bag and I got it at the Goodwill. So... Metal was a thing at some point, although I don't remember it as much as I do some of like the, like the Grecian trend. I remember that a lot more than I remember like this. Mm. I don't know, the material like this, it looks like it would be a great summer outfit. You have the shorts, you have the cute little matching jacket, that, you know, that you can take off when it gets hot. But like something about the material, okay, but it's so, even though it's a really cute outfit and it looks summer friendly, I'm just not convinced of the breathability of the materials and I think it kind of would be like leather, like leather shorts. I think it would just be the chief city. It just, it looks like a sweating, chafing, blistering nightmare. <laughs> I do think if you're someone who goes to a lot of parties, this is a more of a trend for you. If you're going clubbing or partying, and you're, it's at night and you're not under the blistering hot sun um, and you're mostly spending your time in air-conditioned buildings, I do think that this could be something that you would want to incorporate into your outfit. Or you can just be like me and just get kind of like an accessory that can nod to the trend as opposed to getting a whole outfit. But I did find this uh, two-piece from Sheen. I do feel like matching sets are still very much in. People like them, it's easy and it's a good way to really look refined and polished and put together with minimal amount of effort. Then there's this one from uh, Sheen as well and I feel like it's a really interesting mixture of the silver and metal trend but also because of the uh, swoop in the uh, neckline it gives very much Grecian vibes, and then there's also cutouts, so I feel like it is really hitting a lot of the different trends that we're seeing for spring 2023. Skinny pants! Now, they're not, like, skinny, 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 you know, <laughs> the type of skinny that I wear where they are a little bit more loosely fitted than what was, all the millennials were going crazy for back when we were, you know, in middle school and high school. So if you're someone who really hates skinny pants, you can either just, you know, don't go down on this trend route or know that they're not like so you think i'm skinny they're a little bit more loosely fitted but still tailored and in case you're worried if uh skinny jeans are a thing i think it's more of skinny pants like this and like this and then for jeans we are still seeing baggy jeans and i saw a lot of denim on denim what is it called like the the Canadian tuxedo. Do Canadians wear a lot of denim on denim? I haven't, I haven't observed that. I don't know. And like this. And so skinny jeans themselves is not a trend. Maybe it will eventually come back though since we're dabbling with skinny pants, which I feel like more are kind of like just like a 
a skinnier straight leg than what we've been seeing. They're not a true skinny, 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 you know, around the ankles, you know. But I kind of hate that fits of pants are even a trend to begin with. I don't think they should be a trend. I think you just need to figure out A, what you feel comfortable in and what gives you confidence, and then B, what flatters your figure the most, and then wear that. And don't worry about uh, the trends is, you know, it's a high rise, slow ride, mid rise, skinny, flared, mama, boyfriend, and uh, boot cut. It, you know, just, just wear what you like and what you think suits your body the best. All right, gauzy knits. We, people have been loving knits. I feel like it started during the... I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. The panorama, the panda, what else have I heard people call it? <laughs> and I think because a lot of people had some time on their hands and maybe we're taking up, you know, knitting and crocheting. And so people kind of fell in love with the kind of stuff that just felt a little bit more homey, comfortable, reminded us of older and better times and we're still continuing on. I usually see some sort of knit in every single trend or on every single runway since uh, 2020. And this one with the gauzy knits here, like there's this one like by Prada and it's like a whole outfit. <laughs> I feel like more, if this is your style, fine. It could maybe be an interesting like swimsuit cover because I feel like if you're gonna wear something a little bit see-through, the beach is the perfect place for it. Although I don't know how well knits and sand go together. Yes, so I had this one and with the, man, <coughs> she makes everything better. And I feel like this one, you have the asymmetrical skirt, you have the gauzy knits and then the kind of plaid stripey pattern. Reminds me a little bit more of the prep school vibe. I did find ones, if you're like, oh, I don't want something that's like really, really see-through. I did find this one from Lewis and it's definitely pretty wearable. You might still want to wear like a nude bra uh, with it. But yeah, the, the runway was definitely like this. Like, uh, I don't know how to say it. Mew, mew. <laughs> it was gauzy knits, very transparent, kind of go playing off the transparent uh, trend that everybody's been liking. So it's continuing on, but incorporating transparent and knits together. It's really, I feel like what the gauzy knits are. All transparent is isn't really a thing for me, so I definitely like, you know, this one from Lewis. I feel like it's a good nod to the trend without being completely transparent. And then of course you can still get a transparent one. I found this one from Sheen and I actually kind of like it. I feel like it's good because a lot of times I'm out camping and it will be cold in the morning and then it will be cold in the evening. And it's, I think, kind of nice to have something that's a little bit more that you can just play around with layers. It will keep you warmer, but it still kind of looks all summery and cute and pretty. Although I imagine this is also something that you have to be careful about, you know, zipping into your suitcase and having the zipper go right through it. Because if it snags, it's probably all over with. Or you can just snag it elsewhere and go like all distressed with it. And I even feel like this is something, I'm probably definitely gonna be keeping an eye out to see if I can thrift something like this because I feel like especially if you get something like in a neutral color like I'm showing from like, uh, Sheen and Lewis it definitely I feel like you could continue wear it spring summer fall and winter and it definitely could be a cute layering piece you could wear a turtleneck under it for the fall and winter I definitely see a lot of potential for this trend to be incorporated into a wardrobe and not just have it be for that one season and have it being able to keep it and continue it on and have it be a part of your, you know, more permanent wardrobe. Alrighty, mid-length skirts. I think this is a thing because of Emma Chamberlain. Uh, what was it? It was like last summer she was wearing the mid-length skirts and then the tank top and everyone was 
using, you know, her audio and then filming their own versions of it. The fashion world has deemed that that will continue to be a thing. So if you're someone who went out because you saw those videos and got a mid-length skirt and a tank top, you can be happy to know that it is continuing on. I've always kind of struggled with finding a good length skirt for me just because I am curvy and I am petite. I feel like they can just look a little bit more heavy and a little bit more matron only on me as opposed to when a lot of other people wear them they don't look as you know matronly. <laughs> but we saw tons of lengths on the runway. Here's the lovely Bella Hadid in a mid-length skirt and kind of a matching set top with uh, leather accessories to go with it. And speaking of leather, leather there was an all-leather version of the outfits. Well, <laughs> leather works good for fall, winter, spring. I just, I don't know if I'd want to wear an all-leather outfit in the summer. That sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel like if you're short and petite, you're short and petite, same, that's the same thing. If you're short and curvy like I am, I feel like something like this, where it has the slit and it hits just above the knee, I feel like this would be a lot more figure flattering and would have, because the slit will help lengthen you instead of making you look shorter. If you don't want leather and you don't want to slip, I think something kind of A-line, uh, asymmetrical like this from a uh, light in the box. And I feel like this would be very slowly, but because of the asymmetry, will also still help show more of your legs, which will help lengthen you. I have ordered some from online. I broke down. I've been trying to thrift cargo pants for like two years now because they've been a trend that's been mentioned for like the last two years. I think during the panorama, people got sick. Women were like, enough is enough. We need pockets. And the solution was cargo pants because cargo pants usually have like at least three to four pockets, if not more. And I think it continues to be a trend that keeps coming back and coming back every single season because of the pockets. And they're comfy. They, you can do a lot with them. And even though I think a lot of times, kind of traditionally, I thought more of, oh, you want out here. You want out money. Okay, I had to let my dog out. Cargo pants. Really, you can find something that will fit into your wardrobe. I used to kind of think of cargo pants more as either kind of outdoorsy stuff. So, you know, the hiking and the camping kind of cargo pants. Or then there was the street style kind of cargo pant. But I feel like we're seeing a lot more different types of cargo pants. And no matter what your style is, you can, can find a cargo pant that will suit your style. You can find something that maybe is a little bit more classy that you can very easily dress up or dress down if you're someone who dresses more kind of classic and traditionally and just you know that. So no matter what I do think you can find a cargo pant that will suit and that's what I suggest. You find one that will suit your own personal individual style as opposed to going too super trendy with it. But of course the runway we saw really Interesting stuff like this, which I think is more of the streetwear style. This is from uh, Diesel. And I feel like we're now seeing like the matching cargo <laughs> like vest shirt to go with it with the huge cargo <laughs> uh, pockets on the breasts. And it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting, definitely. I feel like there is someone that can totally rock this and look perfectly normal in it. I think I would look like, um, I've never been on a safari, but I know what a safari person should dress like and look like, and this is what I've chose to wear to go <laughs> on a safari. What are you talking about? There's lots of uh, different options. Like here's one from 
Fendi with the satin-like material. I feel like the satin material will also be a really nice thing to have for the summer because I feel like it's a little bit more breathable and cool and not as heavy and you won't get as hot in it even though you're wearing full-length pants. And then we even saw this from uh, Mimu. Uh, Mimi? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Me, 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 me. I don't know. Anyways, where it's a cargo skirt and it's mid-length. I feel like it's a really good option and this kind of the fit of the pants is something that I've seen like Gen Z loves this kind of fit. And like this is high rise. If you want to go double trendy, you can get a low rise option also from Mimo. Emu? 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 This whole video is just going to be me trying to figure out how to pronunciate things. <laughs> capes. I'm, I'm, I'm a little perturbed about the capes because <laughs> I feel like they are such a cute little fall thing. So I feel like because I like I tend to think this is like a fall winter trend, I do think it would be something if you really like it, you can get it now while it's trending and everyone will have it. And then you can continue to wear it, you know, through summer, through fall, and maybe even into winter, depending on how cold it gets where you live. For me, this would just definitely be more of a fall thing. Winter is a little too cold and I feel like the capes, you can't put on a big, huge coat over it. It's not as comfortable. And here are some examples of some capes that we saw. And they're definitely like capes, Knock it. you know, they're not short. They were definitely longer. They are, they're giving, you know, I'm a superhero or something like that vibes. And I feel like this here from Amazon is still kind of fits because you see the longer. And this is what I think like cape. This is what I think of like, it's kind of like a little bit more of a historical accurate kind of cape you know, giving Robin Hood vibes. Then you can also incorporate the blazers that everyone's been liking. You can get this. I feel like this is a mixture between a cape and a blazer, also from Amazon. And then we have, there's also this version of a cape, which I feel like is more, a little bit more reminiscent to like a wrap or a poncho. So there's definitely different ways you can get the cape look. Although I feel like the one that I found the most that was matching what we were seeing on the runway was the one that I felt like was more historically accurate. I don't know how wearable this is for every day where I don't often go running through the woods and I feel like this is the type of cape that you would wear to go running through the woods. That's that's the vibe that it's giving me. <laughs> or like if you're having a winter wedding like, I feel like capes are like so cute for winter weddings. Alrighty, so now let's talk about some of my favorites. I'll pick my top three that I liked that I think is going to be really good for traveling and just incorporating into your tournament wardrobe and your own personal style. I do think the creation dresses are really nice. I think I always like bringing some sort of dress or a one-piece outfit. It could also be like a jumpsuit or a romper. And just because I think it's a good thing if you need, if you're going out to dinner and you want to be a little bit more dressed up. And as I said, you can also dress it down a little bit. And if you're having a day where you're going and walking around town and doing some shopping. And so I feel like just having a cute outfit like that that's really simple and it's just one piece and because it's just one piece it won't take up as much room in your my brain just like did like a hard reset or something because i forgot the word suitcase i also really liked gauzy knits i feel like that is something that is going to really continue to carry over into summer and I feel like it's an amazing layering piece and probably could be worn all year long. You do have to be careful when you're zipping it into your suitcase and make sure that you're not going to ruin the material. And as I said, a lot of times what I do is I just 
put it like in the middle so there's clothes all around it and it's nowhere near the zipper or anything, any hardware on the bottom because sometimes, you know, there's stuff that comes up and you can like clip it on top. I don't want it near that either. So if it's sequestered nicely in the middle, hopefully it will not get ruined. But I feel like it's a really just a great laying piece. A lot of times, depending upon where I am, it's quite cold in the mornings and all the way until like one o'clock and then it starts getting hot and then you need to start or taking off layers and I feel like it's just a good layering piece to have on and then you can put a jacket on over it and then when it gets hot you can take the jacket off but maybe and then kind of avoid that oh I'm hot with my jacket on but cold with my jacket off um that happens a lot and I feel like that could a gauzy knit top could really be a good solution to that I don't know if I'd like a gauzy knit skirt or pant I just feel like I'd be so nervous about sitting on things and having it snag. Like, so that's the one reason why I don't really like the, the gauzy bottoms. And then cargo pants. Cargo pants have been around forever and I feel like each time I say cargo pants, oh, that'd be so good. Just because you probably wouldn't even necessarily need to carry around a huge bag, maybe just like a little fanny pack or something, because you have all those pockets. And I feel like it would just, you'd be on trend and you'd also look like you're ready just to camp and hike and run around and do all kinds of stuff. And as I said, I do feel like there are ways to, depending upon what, but cargo pant you pick out, they can be quite versatile as in a way of dressing them up or dressing them down. It all just depends on the cargo pant that you pick out. All right, guys, guys, this has been some of what I felt like was the more wearable trends for spring 2023. In my next video, I will be talking about some of the trends that I thought were pretty unrealistic. So stay tuned for that video and let me know which of the trends that was mentioned is your favorite and that you're excited to incorporate into your wardrobe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.